Hello again and welcome to this next leather armor tutorial. I'll be showing you how to make basic articulating arms. The theme is a simple fantasy design which is consistent with previous tutorials. We will continue to build towards a complete suit of leather armor in the same theme. Each pattern set of this fantasy armor has two variations included. One of the two styles is demonstrated here. The alternate style is slightly more rounded. I expect many of you will have seen the previous tutorials, so I'll try to go a bit quicker through the process to avoid too much redundancy. But if this is your first time here, be sure to check those previous tutorials out for more explanation of the basics. And if you want to catch tutorials for future pieces of this suit or other projects, be sure to subscribe. The patterns will be made available at the Academy site and on the Academy tier of our Patreon. Thank you to everyone who has supported this channel on Patreon or by purchasing the patterns for any of the previous projects. I really appreciate it. The materials in this video are provided by Tandy Leather, and they have some really big changes that are worth checking out. They used to have a complex pricing system with various club tiers, and some products were marked up more than others, but recently they've completely overhauled everything. They've rolled out what they're calling Everyday Honest Prices, where they simplified and reset prices on virtually everything. I think this is a great move because it will remove some of the friction for new people getting interested in the craft. And of course, better prices is great for everyone. If you'd like to check things out, you can use my affiliate link below to visit their site and order online, or look and see if they have a store in your area to visit in person. Once again, thanks to Tanya Leather for sponsoring Answering this and previous tutorial videos. For demonstration purposes, only the left arm will be made here, but the process is identical for the opposite arm. If you plan to follow along with the patterns, see the included additional tips document for more info about putting the patterns together and sizing info. The leather being used is an 8 to 9 ounce superior oak edge side from Tandy. The process is also the same as in the previous tutorials. Just transfer the pattern to the leather with a fine point marker and mark the holes accordingly. When the patterns have been prepared and traced onto the leather, I'll separate the pieces into manageable sections with a razor, and then proceed to cutting the parts out with my leather shears. Just as a quick reminder, each tutorial so far has slightly different techniques demonstrated, so you can choose your own preferred detail and construction methods. If you are going to use these patterns to build towards a full suit, I suggest picking the detail theme you like the best and sticking with it, or come up with your own variation. For this project, I'll be demonstrating a very simple method to add borders using a stitching edge groover. Normally this is used simply to make a recessed groove for sewing into, but as you can see it also makes quick work of adding a subtle decorative border. There are actually several variations of this type of tool, but this one is my current favorite and is readily available at Tandy. You can use this tool on dry leather, but dampening the leather slightly will help give it a wider impression. One exception is for the barbed decorative elements on the elbow piece. I'll use a swivel knife instead to cut these lines in. As in previous tutorials, I've chosen to bevel the edges of this piece as I go for a cleaner look. Now I'll punch the holes into the pieces. The medium holes will be for the rivets and the larger holes are for the Chicago screws. As another additional cosmetic step, I'm adding a slight crease along the center ridges of the pieces. I simply moistened the leather and hammered the piece along the fold to compress the leather slightly. And for the points of the elbow guard, I'm giving them a slight pinch for a little extra shape.
have been a few variations of the dye and coloring process so far in previous tutorials. This time I decided to demonstrate an alternating color scheme. This is very simple to achieve, I just choose to divide the pieces between red and black in a way that would contrast nicely. The color could be inverted for a slightly different variation. I'm using Phoebing's Pro Oil dye for both the red and the black sections of the arm parts. I'm using a piece of high density sponge to apply the dye in two or three quick coats to ensure complete saturation. And once that is dry, I'll apply some Super Sheen on both sides of all the pieces. Riveting the pieces together is exactly the same as the helmet, bracer, and pauldron tutorials, so let's skip straight to talking about the Chicago screws in a piece like this. Chicago screws, also known as screw post, are a male-female pairing of fastener that are very convenient for leather armor when it comes to making flexible and functional joints. Normal double cap rivets are generally not strong enough for most load-bearing and moving joints. That's where these come in, as they are much stronger. It also makes testing the fit easier, as they are easily removable. But once you are satisfied with the construction, you will need to add a drop of super glue or Loctite to each screw, otherwise they'll be guaranteed to eventually work themselves loose. I expect to delve more into hardware options in future tutorials. includes some basic one inch straps you can use. I chose to use some one inch straps I had on hand since I have a clicker press to make them in bulk. I'll make a free pattern set of other buckle options and a short video going into more details on buckles in the near future, so I won't go into too much detail here. But the included pattern will be adequate and is the most typical approach. One inch buckles are actually on the large side for a piece like this, 
so it's sort of a cosmetic choice. Three quarters or even less can be fine as well. I'm trying to keep these tutorials beginner friendly, and I know for many beginners even buying the first height can be daunting and expensive on its own. So I'm using the same thickness of leather for the straps here, and you can too. At this stage, I wouldn't suggest buying a whole other hide just for the small bit you'd need for the buckles. But, if you have the option, when it comes to straps for armor, it can be a little more optimal to go with something slightly thinner, perhaps somewhere in the 6 ounce range, or even use some pre-dyed or latigo leather. For buckles, it is good to have something supple but strong, so it's easy to use and equip. You can use whatever type of buckle you'd like as well, though any type of center bar buckle is a good and simple option. The holes for the buckle's position is not pre-marked on this pattern as it is best to customize the buckles to each person's unique fit. When you are ready to attach the buckles, fit the piece to your arm and mark the placement of your buckles. I suggest using one at the rear brace top piece across the center and two for the lower van brace piece. beginner friendly project you can actually stop here however if you want to take it just a bit further you may want to add a narrow strip of leather as a retaining strap connecting the inner elbow pieces but it needs to be thin sturdy and supple as anything thicker and heavy will inhibit mobility You can also add another buckle strap with them to span the inner elbow. Half inch wide should be fine. Again, 6 to 8 ounce thickness should be good, but something more supple than veg tan for the sake of comfort. Thanks again for coming along. Last month I had an unplanned move that took a lot out of me, so I'm a bit behind, but I'm trying to catch up and increase the pace. There are still a number of armor parts in this theme left for me to design and make tutorials for, as well as active custom projects that I hope to start sharing more in frequent videos. If you enjoy this series and see the potential for what this can become as I do, I hope you'll all consider supporting this channel along the way. It can be as simple as liking, sharing, subscribing, and of course commenting and let me know your thoughts and wishes for future content. I fell behind on replying to every comment, but I do still read everything. I'm already working on the next video, so I'll see you soon.